Night Live with Master Sensei. Yeah. I need a whiskey, did you? Ah, here we go, all right. What is up, Dojo? Big Smoke Night Live tonight. Uh, we've been waiting all week for the show. We're really excited about the show because uh, we got a guest that is, uh, you guys all know him. And he's opinionated and funny, and we're going to have a really good time. Uh, I'll get to the guest here in a second. But before we get to that, we got some stuff we got to talk about. So much going on. We got the Super Bowl Sunday. Super Bowl, by the way, the Denver Broncos are in the Super Bowl. Thank you very much. We're excited about that. We're going to have a big party. And we have our Pick'em Contest. So if you guys have been paying attention to the Pick'em Contest, make sure to get your entry in before the kickoff. Because the, uh, the prizes for the uh, Pick'em Contest this week, Jordan, are they the, some of the best we've ever given away? So first place, first place, we dug deep into the vault, and the first place winner will get a full bundle of Sensei Sensational Sarsaparilla, and you can't get those anymore. They're totally sold out, total unicorn, so you got to try to get your hands on that. First place will also get a Dojo t-shirt which is cool, and a, uh, a package of the uh, Liga Pravada A-size from the uh, Drew Diplomat series. So you're going to want to do that. Sec there's going to be a second place to get some cool stuff. And then we also have a bonus contest. Now, the bonus, if you, if you, if you fill out the, the uh, entry form, you'll see what the bonus is. The bonus is if you can guess the first player from either team to score a touchdown during the Super Bowl – you'll win the bonus prize. So already we've got a lot of entries. In fact, uh, while I'm doing this here, let me look Let me look real quick. I can tell you what the picks are so far. The picks are so far. Here we go. Right now, oh, we've got uh, over 200 entries already. We just started the contest. And the picks are right now 67% are picking the Panthers. And 32% are picking the Broncos. But even more interestingly, where do you hear this? More interestingly than that, 30, 50, 70, over 75% of the entries wear either an extra large or extra, extra large or triple X t shirt. So, in other words, Dojo, you guys are fat. <laughs> so, uh, a lot of big t shirt sizes. So, uh, it's going to be fun. We're going to have a great time Sunday. Super excited for the Super Bowl. Yes, the Broncos, we feel strongly they're going to do it this year. Obviously, we're from Denver, so we're excited about that. Uh, hey, real quick, before we introduce our, our guest, we got to tell you guys, January was huge on the dojo. It was the biggest month we've ever had on the dojo. Probably we had our, our year-end show, and then Whiskey Night last week was a success not only was it a success on Friday, but it went into Saturday. And Friday and Saturday of last week were two of our biggest days ever on the dojo. So you guys are not only fat, but you drink a lot of whiskey. So that was exciting. Uh, we, so here's the deal. Make sure you get in the contest. We, we also had another contest to give away tickets to the Great Smoke, which is the best cigar event in the world. Me and Jordan go like every other year, right, Jordan? Right. We, try, we try to go every year, but that's tough for us. So we go every other year. And speaking of the great smoke, our guest is none other than Big Delicious himself, Abe DeBabna. Abe, welcome to Smoke Night Live, brother. What's up, guys? How you doing tonight? Good. Shouting out to the whole Dojo Nation. Shouting out to Dojo Nation. Uh, while we do the show, I'm going to fire up one of my favorite sticks, the Big Delicious. Yes, I got this uh, at the show. That would be, what, three years ago? Abe, was that three years ago? Big Delicious, three years ago. Three years ago. So I got that on the show. So uh, let's talk a little bit about yourself first. Get guys that maybe they don't know who you are, which would be crazy because uh, one of the things that interests me, Abe, is – out of all the online retailers or big retailers, you're one of the few guys 
that is sort of like the face of the organization, which I like. There's a face to the organization to smoke in. You guys have uh, retail shops, brick and mortar shops in South Florida, and you have a great online shop that you just did. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Abe, and about Smoke In. I started Smoke In in uh, 1996. It started with a little 900 square foot shop in Tequesta. It was our first location, you know. And um, I had originally gotten the cigar business in Chicago. I'm from Chicago originally. And uh, right during the boom, I had my own graphics company for a while. And um, I started putting humidors in any restaurant, bar, country club, anywhere that I thought they should be selling cigars. And that's how I kind of got started. And I was going to open up a shop in Illinois and um, was working on a lease for about a year, really having a hard time. And I came down to Florida on vacation, liked it, and kind of really never went back. Ended up, you know, getting involved in smoking down here and uh, just built a store over the years uh, from one location to another. And, you know, over the last few years, acquired some competitors who went out of business. And, you know, um, I, I never really wanted to get into the online business, to be honest with you. I mean, I actually, you know, people were telling me early on, I just kind of fought it because what I really enjoyed about being in this business was being in the stores. And <laughs> <laughs> so oh. the lights. Wow. You see that? Lights went off on Abe. Lights! <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Give me a That's second. All right. That's all right. We're, 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 we can uh, we can do the interview in the dark. That's all good. I need one. <laughs> That's live TV for you, folks. So uh, while Abe works on the lights, I got to tell you guys, uh, these I've been aging in my humidor since the event, and it's fantastic. You know what I like about the big delicious Abe? This is a Room 101 micro blend that he did with Matt Booth. What I like about this is it's meaty. It's like meaty and salty. It's like having a steak. And it's even better now than it was before. So well, anyways. Uh, on a side tangent, actually, Matt and I are working on LBD, uh, uh, which is going to be the sequel to that cigar, Little Big Delicious. Little Big Delicious. Yes. So. It's like, it's like a contradiction right in the name. Oxymoron, right? exactly. And uh, kind of kind of what Matt Booth is a little bit, oxymoron. So uh, it would be fun to be working with him again. So very cool. Yeah, that's awesome. But uh, back before the circuit breaker actually broke, my wife tells me, uh, I, 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 I didn't think that the online business would be something I would enjoy doing. Hmm. Because I enjoyed the interaction and dealing with the consumers all day, you know, which is a little bit of a harder thing when I start getting into multiple stores because it becomes harder to have that intimacy with that regular group of guys every day now because now you're bouncing around at different locations. But um, uh, I, I got to really commend it. It was really Jonathan Drew who chided me for like four months to really start doing it. He says, you know, you'll find a way to do it that will make people feel um, – more than just they're buying cigars, you know, because you can buy cigars from anywhere. We always know that. So, you know, and that's what we try to do. That's why I market myself on the site. I want people to know who they're buying from. Right. But it's not just a company and that, you know, every package that we send out online, it's a handwritten letter. It's written by somebody, you know, it used to be me back in the day, but, you know, then it became too many. Um, and we just try to do those little things that make a difference so that you know when you shop with us online, you're not just an order number and products coming out. I mean, I actually encourage customers not to even order online, just call to a store. I'd rather they talk to one of my guys and build relationships with the guys online, you know, I mean, you know, on the telephone. But uh, it seems to have worked. It's become successful. Um, and, you know, I, I have fun sharing my stories with people, and people seem like they like to hear it, so it works out. So uh, you have how many retail locations now? Currently, we have 11 now. We used to have a uh, little 650-square-foot store in the PGA National Resort. Uh, long story short, the lease I had with them was probably a Hall of Fame lease, and they probably hated it every day that I was paying so little rent in there, and they, they really wanted me out of there. And eventually, they paid me to close that shop. Gotcha. Yeah. What, how, long, uh, how long have you been doing the online 
sales? Is that been- you know, I mean, that's a great question because, you know, believe it or not, after 20 years, the dates start getting blurred a little bit. Um, I believe it's been a decade now, you know, close to a decade, 2000, uh, you know, six, maybe it started. It really, it really took off it, 2008, probably, you know, because anarchy came in 2010. And we hadn't refaced the site yet. It was still some original one I built, so we probably ran that two years that way. Because I remember we almost crashed the site when we did the original Anarchy in 2010. I think that May in 2011, we did the site that had basically been there until we just refaced this one now. Yeah, and speaking of uh, refacing the site, uh, you recently refaced it again. Yeah. Uh, and now it's all fancy and new. You know, we, we you know, it's it's funny because in, in in your universe, you know, people tell you what a site should be like. When we talk to people who are SEO guys or design guys, oh, it's too busy. You know, um, you know, it's got to be more simple. And it's funny because I, I see a lot of our competitors follow these rules, you know, but I, I've kind of never been a guy to follow the rules. I usually always follow my gut. I've always kind of had this gorilla way of marketing, you know. I like to go to a homepage and have a lot of options right off the bat. I don't want to look around and we've always got a lot of compliments on our site. You know, we've got a few guys who didn't like it, said it's too complicated, but for the most part, you know, we read every review we ever get or testimonial. We get a lot of positive feedback. So when we reskin the site, we wanted to make it cleaner. We didn't want it to make it feel like somebody was coming back to a whole new site. Right. You know, I bet some people came on there and didn't even really realize it was reskinned and, and, you know, responsive and then it changed because it still had the same feel. It's just a much cleaner look. It's a little more organized look. So, you know, I think, I think it's going to go a long way and, and now it's responsive. So it'll work on your cell phone, your iPad or, you know, whatever smart device you're using. Right. I think one of the things that, um, that smoking is known for, the most, and you touched on it a little bit ago, is the customer service. There's You can buy cigars from, like you said, pretty much anybody, and the prices are usually relatively close from one retailer to another, but you guys take personal care, and I remember when we, uh, and we'll talk about the Dogma a little bit later, but when we sold the Dogma, we had the, the Dojo Underground Dogma. It was a project between me and you and Jonathan Drew, and one night we had the second sale where uh, we sold 400 bundles in like two hours. And uh, you guys stayed up all night long and sent out every single package, uh, U.S. priority mail. So you guys are known for your customer service. And when you order from Smoke In, not only do you get that handwritten note, but I remember, I remember early on when I first got into cigars, I ordered from you guys, and I think I got – uh, I got the wrong order. It was like I ordered naturals and I got Maduros or something like that. And I just called and then, bam, two days later, I got the right order. You guys pride yourself on that customer service. You know, Eric, I mean, it, it's really the only thing that can differentiate you today. You know, when I when I hire people, because I do all my own interviews, I, I like to ask them, and I, and I have very unorthodox interviews. I, you know, <laughs> I'll ask them, I said, what do you think I sell for a living? And, you know, 80% of them will say cigars. That's never the answer. No one walks out of one of our stores and said, wow, man, that, that was the best Monte Cristo I ever had. Or that was the best Padron I ever had. That's not what people are talking about. If you want to initiate anything emotional with people, you have to touch them with experiences. How they're treated from the moment they walk through the door, whether they're, you know, whether someone notices them and acknowledges their presence and asks if they need any help, how they're talked to in the humidor. And, you know, sometimes you have to acknowledge there's a guy who comes to your shop who wants to sit there and put his headphones on and read a book and be left alone. But, you know, it's providing that experience and we try to do it with phone calls and, you know, it's hard. When you set such a high standard, I believe we set a really, really high standard. Um, it's hard, man, because, you know, you have, you can't let up. There's no, coasting it's, it's a constant pressure to stay on top of every situation every customer service problem every issue 
And you know, I, you know, we have you know, we, me and me and the guys kind of laugh because we have some of these historical emails we've saved over the years where guys will be livid about something, and I will respond and uh, you know, in a way, and take my time to write an email, and ninety percent of the time they'll turn around. We, uh, you were you were you were part of one of those things, um, the Robin Williams sampler. Oh right, yeah. <laughs> a hot weekly deal. We had, this is a great story. We had a hot weekly deal. I'm in North Carolina. I'm I'm somewhere in the woods of North Carolina, man. No idea what's going on. Right. You start texting me. Yeah. Man, guys are talking on the dojo. There's some issues where I don't know know what's going on. I get on my laptop. There's like 1,500 emails. Oh my gosh! Yeah. You know, because we used to have this weekly hot weekly deal, right. and it was it was satirical. It made fun of whatever was going on in the world, or it was, you know, it, it, it had to do with current affairs. Some of it was funny, some of it was not funny. But, you know, when these, this, these samplers, and, and you know, it was stuff we were giving away at a loss. Right. And packages, stuff, brands that we either took off the shelf, we had too much of. We were dumping it at a price probably below our cost most of the time. So we were not making any money on these things. And, um, we really must have got 15. You know, it's funny because we did a James Gandolfini tribute sampler. No one cared. But when Robin Williams died, we had the Robin Williams sampler. And, you know, the story said, because, listen, I was a big fan of Robin Williams. And it was, the writing was a tribute right. to him. Here, light up a cigar in his memory. Oh, my God, we got 1,500 emails. I remember that. Dating, calling us scumbags, taking advantage of it. I, I literally, and, and I'll tell you today, in the course of two days, I replied to every email. Now, a lot of it, a lot of it was copy and paste, you know, <laughs> changing the name, unless there was something specific the guy said I want to address that made slight changes. But I responded to every email. And I'm going to tell you something. Out of the 15, close to 1,500 emails, only two guys still responded, you know, said, you know, screw you, you know, still. Everybody else, okay, I get it. It might not be a great taste. I see you. Thank you for taking the time. Because I'm a firm believer, if someone's got a problem, they should be acknowledged. Yeah. You know, we had a guy, believe it or not, I got it. We could swear on this? Yeah. Okay, I'm used to being on the radio, you know. We yeah. had a guy We had a guy who sent me an email. He sent the info at Smoke In. He said, you could take those Cuban tickets and shove them up your ass. I'll never... <laughs> shop from you again and this is he was talking about the great smoke you know because we're giving away a trip for two to cuba you know and before we did this we actually talked to a lot of our cuban friends in the industry and none of them really thought it was an offensive thing you know but i took the time i sent the guy an email back you know and, I, and I, i'm honest i said listen i appreciate you taking the time to write us i wish you had been a little more constructive in your wording but nonetheless you know i understand your point and your concern i want you to understand that first off the great smoke's a charity event 100% of the net proceeds from the ticket sales goes to charity. It goes to the Kids Cancer Foundation, okay? And it, it pretty much has been selling out for the last three years. We're not, he says, he won't support a business that will, um, that uses the suffering of Cuba. We weren't using the suffering of Cubans for anything. We thought this was a trip that our clientele would be very appreciative to win. Cuba is the birthplace of our industry and what we enjoy. And many, many people would be excited to go and witness it. And, you know, sure, there's change that needs to happen there, but change has to happen in small steps. Yeah. It changes doesn't happen in the leaps. If you're not willing to take small steps, nothing's going to change. You know, I told him, look, you know, I, I'm sure I'm not as close to the matter as you are, but I assured him the guy never responded back positively or negatively. But that's the thing in customer service, man. You just always have to have the customers. I, my belief is I would want to treat every single person who deals with our organization the way I want to be treated. And I have a pretty high level of standard in how I think business should be done. Yeah, you guys do a fantastic job of that. Uh, I think that that's the biggest feedback that we get about Smoke In is the customer service. Hey, Dojo, if you're watching the show right now and you have a question for Abe that you'd like me to ask him, uh, just post it on the Dojo as a new status update. Include the hashtag AskDojo, and I'll do my best to ask Abe. I've got a question already. Um, this one's from Army RN, all right, Abe? And uh, she asks, does it take a lot of money to start up a small cigar shop, and what would be the best cigars to start selling? 
Yeah, you know, that's a great question. You know, small is relative. So, you know, if you're talking like a thousand, see, see here, here's it, a lot of it has to do with your business philosophy. I'm a believer in having inventory. You know, people are afraid of inventory. They don't, and one of the things that most people say when they come into our shop is, oh my God, how much cigars do you have? Well, let me tell you something. Money in the bank is worthless today. So I'd rather have cigars. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, if you open up a small store, you know, say a thousand square feet, that's a relatively small cigar shop, 900,000 square feet. That was my first store. You know, I think we packed in, you know, I think we packed at least $150,000, if not more in inventory in that little store. Wow. You know, just in cigars, you know, because the humidor room was, my stores have big walk-in humidors. I mean, that's what we do. We sell cigars. So, I mean, I think for any kind of small cigar shop, you need a couple hundred thousand, quarter million. But the upside to it is, is compared to most businesses, you could build a relatively nice cigar shop. You know, not nothing great, but you could build a decent shop with not a lot of money. You know, a lot of it's woodwork and carpentry, you know, so you can get away with tens of thousands. Most of it's going to be in inventory, which is all sellable. So it, the risk is a lot less because the bulk of what you're going to invest in is something that, God forbid, your business fails. You could sell and get a return on your money. So you know, that's that's pretty much it. What brands? You know, there's the staple brands that everybody who smokes cigars knows, sells. Um, you know, your Padrones, your Fuente, your Davidoff, your Ashton, my father, uh, Perdomo. But, you know, we have 11 stores. I got stores 20 minutes apart. Stuff sells in one store and stuff sells in another. So, nice. it's best, yeah, it's best to start with the staples and see how your clientele reacts. And if you're a good retailer, if you're a good tobacconist, you'll help groom your patrons to want to expand their horizons and, you know, help them on what I call the cigar journey and, and, and get into new things and try new things. You know, it's it's like knowing somebody who all he wants to eat every time you go to a restaurant is chicken parmesan. <laughs> chicken. I, I don't care, but at some point you say, God, don't you want to have something else? Right. You know, Abe, the, the store I want to talk about a little bit is your Boynton Beach store, which is your, your new store. That store is is first class man that is a nice store what's really cool about it is two things uh two of my favorite things uh first of all you can order drinks which is great you can sit down and buy a cigar get a drink and that's my favorite kind of store to go to got a nice bar but sec yeah a great bar uh but secondly is your uh, little fine and rare section in that store talk a little bit about the fine and rare section that's a great little place to enter man you know, I like to acquire rare things or save things. And um, we have a room that we put stuff in that either has been gone for a long time, people haven't seen it for a long time. We got some original Padron Millenniums that came out in 2000. We got some original uh, Partagas 150s, I think, came out in 1995. Um, so it's stuff that I've acquired, I've collected over the years. We got some clear Havana cigars that date back to the 20s and 30s. Um, some pre-embargo Cuban rums. So um, it, it's a cool room. We, we only let one customer in at a time. Obviously, it has to be escorted. And um, it's kind of cool to see the faces of people when they see a cigar that's been gone for a long time, and all of a sudden it's there. And we limit, we limit almost everything that's in there now. We have a wall that's – we've had blends that were made for us for that room. For instance, when we first opened three or four, three and a half years ago um, – Pepin had made us a blend, and Jaime had made us a blend in, a, in, in, a, in two wrappers, in a Toro size, and uh, you know it was a one-run deal. I think we ordered like two thousand cigars, and when they were gone, they're gone. And I think they all sold out six months ago. So we have that type of stuff too. It's kind of like a local micro blend instead of like a national micro blend release. And then um, you know I yeah I got some uh, dog mustache aside. In the next two or three years, you might find them in that room. Uh oh. Hey -o. <laughs> you know, that's what we do. Anything I see cool in the industry, we pack them. I, I got boxes in storage with dates on them, just waiting to eventually make their way into the rare vintage room. Those, those dogmas, I would imagine, would go instantly. I actually saw a guy trying to sell uh, on eBay, believe it or not, for 350 bucks for a bundle. Yeah, so I mean, we... Those are popular. Everything in that room, it's it's pretty much limit one or two sticks a person. 
Because gotcha. otherwise, I have, especially here in South Florida, we have the clientele where a guy could just wipe out. You know, I had one guy who wanted to buy my whole Padron Millennium Humidor in one shot. And, you know, it's like, no. And he couldn't understand why. I said, well, because it's, it's not easy to fill that room to find right. stuff to put in there. So I want this box to sit around for a year, you know, and, 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 and a hundred different people get to enjoy it instead of one guy who just walks in and scoops it all up. Right. Yeah, that's a good strategy. I like that. Spread it around. Yeah. Give everybody a little bit of a chance. Uh, here's a question for you. <clears throat> this one comes from uh, Jack. Wants to know, where did you get the uh, nickname Big Delicious? Matt Booth. Uh, Matt Booth gave me that name and actually one of the great smokes because we used to do our radio show live. We have a radio show, Kiss My Ash Radio. And um, I was doing our show from the Great Smoke and uh, Matt was one of the guys on there. And I think at that time, I may have not actually been doing the show. I think that year, because, you know, we we're still getting ready for the event and doing stuff. I had bought in one of the other DJs from the station to actually interview people and do it while we were setting up. So I was riding a Segway going across the stage where they were doing, we were doing the show. And Matt Boo says, there goes Big Delicious on a Segway. And Nate stuck. And we liked it. We decided to make a good cigar. There we go. That's the answer, Jack. Thanks for the question. Uh, one last uh, audience question here. This one's from, uh, hold on here. It's just coming in. Uh, uh, I can't ask you that. That's a weird question. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to ask you what that was later. I'm curious. Yeah. It has to do with the big delicious thing. But uh, anyways. Now I don't want to know. Here's a, here's a question uh, from Jay. He wants to know, uh, who do you think is going to win the Super Bowl? Wow, that's a good question. I got to tell you something. I hope Denver wins. I've been a Denver fan since Elway. And, you know, I think anybody listening to this is going to have one of those guys. There's always a guy in your life who's such a super mega fan that they end up making you despise that team. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. They live, breathe, every Facebook post. Oh. So I got a I got a Panthers guy who play I play poker with regularly. He comes to the store and, and he I could tell you I could never care less about the Carolina Panthers, but I despise that team now. So I'm definitely hoping Denver wins and crushes the Panthers. Well, I, I hope you're right about that one. Uh it's a tough game, but we'll see. Yeah. I'm 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 cautiously optimistic for the Broncos. But, you know, we had our hearts broken a couple years ago, so we're just what – we, what we've done, Abe, is we have, like, uh, certain whiskeys and cigars laid out if we win, and then certain <laughs> laid out if we lose. So we'll see how that goes. Hopefully I'll be drinking some Pappy Van Winkle to, uh, Sunday night. But, um, all right, this one comes uh, – one more question. This one comes from Duke. Uh, Duke says, uh, not so much a question for A, but for MS and the crew. Oh, I guess it's for us. Besides drinking uh, PBR, what is the dojo senior leadership doing to get prepped for Super Bowl 50? Well, I just told you. We got our, we got our, uh, our good cigars lined out, and then we got our good bourbon lined out, which is some Pappy. And what, Matt, what were you bringing? Or no, Dominic, you were bringing uh, some uh, William Luru Weller from the Antique Collection, and that's about as rare – as hens balls, so we'll be doing that. And if we don't win, Matt, you're bringing cask strength, cask strength makers, which is really good too. So that's what we're doing to get prepped. We're going to have a uh, some some good food and whatnot. We're going to be having fun with the contest as well. So you guys got to make sure you're on the dojo Sunday because that'll be uh, exciting when the uh, winners start to to happen. So hey, before we get too far into this, we got to talk about the event, the Great Smoke. It's coming up February twentieth. Great. Uh, this is the biggest one I've ever seen you do. You've got so many things. Let me let me let me just run this down real quick. Uh, on Friday you have a La Polina event. The events on Saturday, uh, you'll have a meet and greet with Ray Lewis and Gary Sheffield, which is really cool. I want to hear about this next one in a minute. You can win a trip to Cuba at the event. Now that's really cool. Then Matt Booth's event is Saturday night, and then there's a brunch with you on Sunday. So talk a little bit about the great smoke this year and, uh, and all the stuff you got going on. It sounds just incredible. Well, it, it's hard to believe sensei, but it's been 10 years, man. It's our 10 year anniversary wow. of this event, man. It's mind boggling. 
You know, it started as just a small little local event for guys in the neighborhood, and it's just turned into a nationally, you know, attended event for people, even Canada. I think the first guys who bought tickets were from Canada. Um, so, it, 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 you know, it, one of the things in something like this is, and I think why our event's been successful is every year we try to add something different. Yeah. You know, I don't care how great an event is, if it's the same event year after year, year after year, people get tired of coming. And that's just what happens, you know? Right. It could be, you know, you could have the best pizza, you eat it every day, and it's like, all right, what's next, you know? Right. So um, we really go to lengths to add twists, do things. We bought, we're bringing people in from America's Got Talent for a few years, and and uh, you know, last year, which you attended last year, right? Yeah, yeah, we were there. It was yeah, great. Every, every year is like a blur for me. So, but yeah, I mean, and that was the first time we did it at that venue, which was amazing. We did it at the American German Club, and it was God, it was awesome. And that being our first year, we spent hours after that event figuring out how we can make it better this year. We got a lot of improvements this year, but yeah, we do a, a dinner at Roos Chris, which has gotten better and better over the years. And Bill Paley is our honorary guest, so guys will get a five pack and a ashtray and have a phenomenal meal and get to have dinner with Bill Paley. And the next day we go gung ho with the event. And this year we got vendors. We got vendors coming from all over the country to sell stuff: smoking jackets from Milwaukee, fedora hats from Kentucky, guys who make these custom copper ashtrays. I mean, some really cool stuff. Um, we upgraded the food this year. You know, it's it's becoming. You know, it's, it's very hard to make free food or, you know, food that's included at ticket price, you know what I'm saying? When you have almost 3,000 bodies lying around. Right. And then make it quality, you know? One of the one of the first things, the first great smoke was everybody loved the food. Well, you know, we we're cooking for 200 people. You know, I mean, it was simple, you know? I mean, he was actually making some tours, so now, now it became harder, but last year when we moved to American German Club, we actually have a kitchen outdoor now. Right. We never had before, so we've really spent a lot of money and worked with the chef to upgrade the food and the guys in the VIP section this year are going to have their own food stations with like chicken parm and a, and a real upgrade of, of, of food. So we worked on that. Um, you have and, some uh, you have some whiskey vendors. Last year, High West was there, which is really uh, cool. there's there's a whole bunch of people that, that that are there. I mean, Joe and Jack's been a sponsor for the last couple of years of the event. I mean, it's it's booze, food, and cigars galore, and strippers. I mean, what more do you want? You know, it's, <laughs> I mean, uh, you, know. you got the dunk tank, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the Spearman Rhino dunk tank. This year it's going to be all Rhino girls. In fact, what I did this year is I made a little competition between the Rhino girls, all right? They're actually, whichever girl can raise the most money, because all that money that they raise for the dunk tank goes to Children's Cancer, the uh, Kids Cancer Foundation. Where, whichever, so I made these girls these little cards. Come see me in the tank with their own times, you know? And the girl that raises the most money, I think we got like a $200 Macy's gift card or something, so... There's the Rhino girls will be competing to get guys to, to dunk them, so it'll be pretty cool. So if a guy goes to this, uh, what does he expect to get uh, cigar-wise? All the major manufacturers are there. I, you know what? I'm going to tell you something. And, you know, it's one of the things that really makes me proud of the event. Every single manufacturer who has been involved and continues to be involved says this is one of their favorite events of the year. And they all mean it sincerely. They enjoy it because – a cattle call you know it's, it's it's cigar life it's socializing you know so we got the best duffel bags cooler duffel bags we've made we try to change up the little commemorative bag every year this one's a really cool one easy access open top you can walk around you get a coupon book you're going to go to 45 different cigar booths 45 different booths you hand them a coupon they give you a cigar and um, all top-notch cigars so you're going home with a buttload of cigars um, the CRA is there taking memberships. Uh, Cigar Snob is there. Um, then we got all the we got four different food stations for general admission from south of the border, Asian to Italian, to the barnyard, and beer, wine, soda. Red Bull girls are there. We got a photo booth, the, the Gentleman Jack photo booth. We even got a massage center for guys who are tired and want to stop and get a quick massage. You know. And then we got a cool band, the people upstairs. We had Fog Hat last year, which was a big yeah. Fog Hat was a big, you know, this will tell you something about the cigar lifestyle. Fog Hat was a big coup for us. I thought, wow, I got this great band giving me a great rate for charity. 
it's going to be awesome. And I'd say 10% of the people stayed to watch the show. Mm. So it told me really didn't matter who was music because it's, you know, at that point, they, most of the guys have been there since 10, 11 o'clock, been drinking, eating, smoking all day. Uh, a concert at 5.30, eh. mm. they weren't that interested. And you don't want to pay for like a fog head or somebody to play during the event because during the event, everybody's doing stuff. No one's watching the music. But we got a rocking local band who did the event once, like two or three years ago, called The People Upstairs. And they're going to be awesome. And then uh, we give away a grand prize where every VIP or general admission ticket holder, a guy who buys a general admission VIP, they're going to keep their bottom stub of their ticket. And we're going to give away a trip for two to Cuba for nine days. For nine days. That's amazing. It's all, it's, it's private charter there, all itineraries. You're going to roll your own cigars in a tobacco factory. You're going to see a rum factory. And I think you got like a year and a half to book your trip. You know, it's an open window thing. So I thought for our 10th year anniversary, that'd be a pretty awesome prize. Yeah, because you guys have given away like, a, I think you gave away a Camaro one year. You've given away like big blocks of silver. 20, pound, 20 pounds of solid sterling silver. Yeah. Yeah. A uh, Camaro, a Harley, a Rolex, you know. But the best part about it is we've raised a ton, loads of money for the Kids Cancer Foundation. A couple of years ago, they named me Hero of the Year, which was a, a real awesome honor. Um, it's a great cause. I got four kids. I just, I, I ran home to do this. I came home with my father-daughter dance. I had to take three of my little girls to a, their father-daughter dance tonight. And uh, kids, that, kids that fight cancer, man, if you ever get chance to be exposed to that, you know, I hope you don't, but if you do, they're amazingly brave and amazingly resilient, man, and it's, it's, uh, it's touching, so I, I really love working with that organization, they're a great group of people. So, uh, if a guy wants to go and uh, have a shot at uh, a nine-day trip to Cuba, how, do, how does a guy get involved, how, how, do, how do we go? You visit our website at thegreatsmoke.com, tickets are on sale there. Uh, there may not be any VIPs left. Last time I looked, honestly, I think there was less than a dozen VIP tickets left. But general mission, there's still plenty. But th this is the biggest year ever, and we've never sold out general admission before until the day of the door. We sold the remaining tickets at the door. Uh, this year could be the first year it might possibly sell out before the event completely. Hmm. That'd be fantastic. But yeah, I there's, will, that. There's, a, there's a free after party at Spearmint Rhino, and we're doing our brunch the first time ever the Sunday right after that at the shop. Yeah, what's the brunch? You just uh, just show up and eat, smoke, and... Yeah, it's a $20 brunch, and Chef Richard from Culinary Flair, who's done all our events for years, it's going to be a three-station brunch. So you're going to have your omelet and waffle and pancake station, and, you know, then you're going to have your cold cuts, your seafood salad, tuna salad, whatever station... And you're going to have a hot station. So for $20, it's an all-you-can-eat brunch. You get a cigar on top of it. And um, if you want to pay the extra $10 for those three, three hours, you can have bottom, bottomless mimosas and Bloody Marys. That sounds awesome. So go to thegreatsmoke.com, buy your ticket, and get ready to roll. Uh, let me check here. I do have another question for you. This one comes from uh, Simon. Simon wants to know, uh, why does Izzy smell like cheap perfume? Because Izzy wears cheap perfume. <laughs> Izzy, Izzy's probably got one of the biggest following. He, he, he's really our customer service specialist. Izzy is amazing. I love yeah. that guy. He's the coolest guy in the world. 90% of the people, 90% of the people who probably deal with us or order from out of the state most likely deal with Izzy. If not Izzy, it's too. But Izzy's probably the number one people person we have there. But he does wear cheap cologne, yes. Yeah. All right, uh, this one's from, uh, where is it here? This is from, uh, this is from Brad from Tampa. He wants to know what it would be like if Abe played Cigar Wars for two minutes. Have you ever played Cigar Wars, Abe? No, what's Cigar Wars? Are you ready? It's the newest feature on the dojo. That we you know, I'm going to tell you something. I can't keep up with you, man. You're like worse than me. Eh? I see your Cigar Wars and this and that. You guys got something going on like all the time, constantly making new stuff. So Cigar Wars is essentially sort of like, uh, what's that thing? What's that dating site? What's that? Tinder. Tinder. It's like Tinder, except for cigars. All right? 
So I'm going to have you play it for 60 seconds. Now, all I'm going to do, we'll go to Cigar Wars, and you're going to see two pictures of cigars. And you just tell me which one you'd rather smoke, all right? Okay. Okay, here we go. Abe playing Cigar Wars for, should we do what, we do two minutes? Let's do uh, 100, 120 seconds. So you tell me when you're ready. All right, here we go. So you just tell me. Okay. And go. And go. All right. Oh, Big Delicious. Big Delicious. Big Delicious Pizza Cube Mayo. All right. Here we go. The uh, Quesada Reserva Provada versus the San Andreas uh, Madero. Uh, Reserva Provada. That's a great cigar, isn't it, Abe? Yeah, I'm not really a Connecticut guy. That was a tough call. Oh, here's the uh, Warped La Colmina versus the Warped La Hacienda. A warped duel. Yeah, this is interesting because we just picked up this line. I just started getting into Kyle cigars, but I think I'm going to have to go with the La Colmina. Okay. And by the way, you can save 15% at Smoke In with uh, coupon code Dojo W on Warp Stuff. All right, let's see what's up next. Oh, you got the Ikiban versus the L'Atelier Extension de la Racine. I really like the Extension de la Racine, Ooh. so I got to go with that one. All right. Oh, Anarchy versus the El Gringo. Dude, come on. <laughs> come I, on. I, I know that one. And here is Cote d'Or versus the Lesia Black. Uh, Cote d'Or. Okay. Oh, a shark versus the Cuban Ramon Alonis Superioris. That's a tough one. You know, I'm probably going to go with the 77 shark. All right. 77 shark it is. Oh, Padron versus the... 1926. Yeah, that's a that's a great stick. Solid. And dirty Rat versus the Hex. Yeah, I got to say Dirty Rat. Ooh, even over the Hex. Yeah, I got to be honest, man. All right, 601 Blue versus the Herrera Esteli. The Blue. Oh, nice pick. Interesting. CAO versus the Viaje. Uh, Viaje by far. Okay. A little Papas Fritas versus the La Jugada Habana. I'm going to go with La Jugada. Not a big fan of the Papa Frita. It should stay a French fry. <laughs> Ashton versus the uh, Olive Master Blends. <laughs> What's this based on? Are we including price points in this? Just whatever you pick. I, I, I like the Master Blend straight. Wow. Interesting. The Corto versus the Quesada Keg. Hey, that Quesada Keg is a great value. Solid. I like that keg. Okay. And here you go, the Casa Cuba fan, one of my favorites. Casa Cuba, hands down. That's a great stick. This is the regular Herrera SLE versus the... La Aroma. Um, probably the Herrera Esteli. It's a close one between those two. That is a close call. Here he goes, a Cuban versus the Jericho Hill. You know, never been that big of a fan of the Cohibas. I'd go to Jericho Hill. All right. So check this out, Abe. Now you can go. To, we can, that's the two minutes. We can go to the, the leaderboard here. We can look at the, the top 100. We'll see what's what's up right now. So right now the 1964 is on top. You got the the uh, Power Ranger in second. So you can you can check this. Here's another cool feature is if you look at uh, oops sorry, if you look at uh, you can look at by category and find out. Uh, here's the top Maduros, the top Naturals. Top hey, people, people just do this through the app. Yeah, they just do it through the app, and uh, we got some really exciting stuff coming up, guys. By the way. Stay tuned to Cigar Wars because we're uh, this is this is a uh, exclusive right here on the show. Jordan is about to announce in the next day or two the first Hall of Fame induction cigar from Cigar Wars. And what happens is, if a cigar wins two months in a row, two months in yeah, all right, two months in a twelve month period, then it goes into the Hall of Fame, gets taken out for twelve months, so that it can't it can't compete for 12 months and it gets a it gets a star rating in the Hall of Fame and then it can come back in 12 months and if it wins again it gets another star and so forth so uh, right now the Padron 64 has won two months so it will soon be our very first Hall of Fame pick so Cigar Wars is a lot of fun Abe you'll have to check it out yeah it's kind of addicting some guys like uh, I think people have been fired from their jobs because they just sit there and play Cigar Wars all day, so. 
I'm not gonna lie. I was hoping you were gonna put two up there that I was gonna say I'd rather smoke my dog's turd, but <laughs> there, there wasn't. There was always a choice. I'd rather smoke one. There, there is. Get this. How many battle combinations, Jordan? Uh, almost fourteen thousand. There's about fourteen thousand different battle combinations that you could wow. pick from in Cigar Wars. Wow. So it's pretty fun. All right, Abe. So uh, here's the deal. I wanted to ask you a little bit about your micro blend series. If guys aren't aware of the micro blend series, uh, Abe has done this really good job of getting manufacturers to do a special blend just for smoke in. And uh, some of the ones that he's done, obviously, a lot of guys might be aware of the Tatawahe Anarchy, the one and two, or and you got the Apocalypse as well. You got the Drew Estate Pope of Greenwich Village. Uh, one of my favorites is the Dunkel, the Oktoberfest Dunkel. That, to me, is the best Oktoberfest cigar. You have those uh, around, believe it or not. 601 Bunker Buster. Those are tasting really good right now, Abe, by the way. I had one the other night. They're gone. I don't even have any. Big Delicious is one of the micro blends. Gone. The Pactum, which is what Abe's smoking tonight. So, Love Abe, it. talk a little bit about the micro blend series, because that's a really interesting concept that you came up with. When we wanted to celebrate our 15th anniversary, this year's our 20th, so it's five years ago, a little over five years ago, we wanted to do something very cool. So we decided to team up with maybe four manufacturers, and the first one was Pete Johnson, of which we did Anarchy, to make a one-and-done one run of something just for our stores. And, of course, the Anarchy was a, a monster, a huge hit. It was in Playboy magazine. People went crazy for it. And um, even the My Father and the Padron, the Padron SI-15, people are still talking about it today. I think at that time, it was only the third store exclusive the Padron family had ever done. And um, we got such good feedback and such responses from everybody, from consumers, from bloggers, right? We just said, why stop? So we just kept rolling. And in the concept of doing it, and this last year, we released our 10th, one the series, the Pope of Greenwich Village, which was our 10th micro blend that we did with Drew Estate in a size that's becoming like my favorite size now, that five and three quarters by 46, you know, 45. So um, I think it was a six by 46. But, um, and it's great. And we're going to continue to do it. You know, I'm gonna, my goal is to shoot to do one, one or two a year. You know, it, it, it's mostly about getting, working with the right company to make something and, and, and this is what I've done as a barometer. It's things that I really enjoy. Um, it's cigars whose blends that I've found to be very pleasing. And knock on wood, a lot of the consumers and aficionados in America agreed that they got the same kind of flavor profile. So they've all worked out. So um, we were supposed to, at the end of last year, you probably saw pictures of it online, uh, we've saved a 1,000 cigars from every project we've done. And it's really funny because I'm sitting on all these cigars and the boxes are, have even been in Miami for the last four months. Um, we're going to have a first edition micro blend collector set. So it's oh. going to one of every cigar we've made up until through the Pope. But there's a tray inside that holds each of the different size cigars. They've messed up that tray three times. Oh, <laughs> three times. So it, there's a container bringing the great smoke bags to Miami next week, and those trays are supposed to be on that container, so I'm praying that this batch works. You're praying that the fourth time is a charm, right? I'm praying the fourth time is a charm. <laughs> yeah, that's it, Padron. It's really funny because, like, the first time, they whoever took our samples just, like, beat them up. So when they got the big delicious down there, all the shaggy foot broke off. So they only made the hole in the tray, the length of the cigar, and there wasn't room for that little shaggy foot. Mm. So then they would fix that one and screw up another size. It was perfect before. I mean, it's just insane. <laughs> Crazy. It's funny, Abe, that you say that because, like, it, pretty much every cigar manufacturer that we have on the show, Brand Runner, they all talk about the hardest part about cigars is getting the boxes done right and you know having the paint dry and and all that kind of stuff so it's funny that you mentioned it that you it have is. the same issue experienced it myself this this project was supposed to be out for christmas and we're a little late i'm just praying we make it before next christmas er eric espinoza always says the cigars are the easy part 
<laughs> yeah, for him. It's the other stuff. Speaking yeah. of uh, cigars, we did a project together, the Dogma, the Drew Estate Dogma, which you were instrumental in making that come to be. And if guys, I know guys on the dojo are excited about the Dogma, and they're always trying to get their hands on it, but they're sold out. But that project, uh, we we did a we did a herf. It was a virtual herf, and the herf was for uh, it was the it was a Tatawahi herf. And you were on that night, and uh, I made some sort of comment about doing a dojo cigar. And the next day, you called me and you said, "You want to do a dojo cigar? Let's do it." Yeah. And you said, "Who who do you want to do it?" And you just pick anybody. And I said, "Well, what about uh, Drew Estate?" And you said, uh, "Yeah, let's get him." And you called Jonathan. And then the interesting thing. Abe about that stick is a year to the day exactly I, I calculated it the day that me and you talked on the phone a year later exactly was the day that that cigar went on sale so wow. it's just really interesting what a great project that was it's fun and those, those guys are always fun to work with so it was very very cool and uh, it was a great cigar I loved it yeah it's aging wonderfully when we went to cigar safari this year uh, they broke out some dogmas that were sitting in the uh, in the factory there, and we all smoked them. And man, they smoked amazingly. They were they had a nice sweetness had developed, really really good. I was supposed so, to. Okay. So uh, here we go. We're we're winding down. This hour's flown by super fast. Wow, really? But wow, before, wow. yeah, before we before we end, we got two things we want to do. Uh, the first. The last thing we're going to do is pick the winner of the uh, contest for the tickets. Now, it's a, it's a base ticket to the Great Smoke plus a companion ticket. So two people can go, and uh, we'll pick that winner at the end. We're going to do a random generator to pick the winner. That way, uh, me and Abe don't have any favorites or anything. We'll just pick the, uh, the winner randomly. But before that, we're going to do a little thing we like to call the Dojo Stock Market. And... Uh, it's a cigar stock market, actually. So I'm going to show you some brands, 10 brands, okay? And I want you to tell us and the, and the viewers, should you buy, sell, or hold this stock? In other words, do you feel like this brand is on the upswing, or are they just stagnant in the middle? Maybe you should hold the stock because you're not sure, or maybe you should sell because you feel like they're going the wrong direction, all right? You got the right guy for this game. All right, yeah, you are. You're the perfect guy for this game. All right, so this is going to be tough for you. Here we go. Get ready, folks. The uh, second edition of the Cigar Brand Start Stock Market. And here we go. Abe, are you ready? I am ready. All right. The first brand is Alec Bradley. Should you buy, sell, or hold the stock? What do you think about these guys? Sell. Sell. How come? You know, I, I really don't know. I was talking to the rep and some of the guys today. I, you know, I don't know where Alan Rubin is. I'm not sure if he's gotten tired, um, if he's burnt out. It, it just seems to be like there's no blood, you know, life left going on in that organization. I'm, I'm not. I'm not sure what's going on behind doors, but just the feeling I get is it's, it's almost as if uh, Alan Rubin is like kind of burnt out and maybe has lost. Interest, I could be wrong, but that, that's the feeling I've gotten lately. I'm going to I'm gonna agree with Abe on this one and say sell. I, I hope that they can make a comeback. they got, they got you know great marketing in the past, and they've had some excellent cigars in the past. But I do feel like you feel, Abe, there's a bit of a lull, and uh, hopefully they can get past that. We'll see. All right, number two, crown heads. Buy, sell, or hold? Hold. Hold. Okay. Hold. Give us your reason. Uh. You know, I think it's a lot of it's in their their approach. You know, I, I think they're two laid back guys, and they don't, you know, they're not really interested in blowing up. You know, they make good cigars. They're getting them out there. They're selling them, but I'm not sure how far it's going to go. Uh, mostly by design. So I think that's the situation there. Yeah, I'm going to say hold also because uh, 2014 was a great year for Crown Heads. But 2015, they were a little bit off the map. So uh, I'm, I'm expecting that John Huber will have a rebound. So right now, hold on to that stock, folks. Don't don't let it go quite yet. All right, here we go. Next one, Cubana can. Sell. Sell. <laughs> yeah, they're struggling, right? Fire sale. Fire sale. 
What, what do you think? What do you tell us why? Tell people why. I, I, I have no idea what these guys are doing, who, what they're doing, who they're doing it with. I don't think they know what they're doing it with. It's, it's just a clusterfuck. Yeah, I like Lawrence. He's a great guy, but I'm a little worried too. I know they got some trouble going on, so we Listen, can only. I know a lot of great guys, but business is business, man. And, you know, yeah. I, I don't know who's even selling the brand nowadays. You know, look, you know, somebody somebody thinks that if you could make a good dish, you could run a restaurant. It doesn't work that way. My wife cooks great food. I wouldn't put her in any restaurant in the universe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, here we go. Next one. Espinosa. Bye. Oh, yeah. I agree. Tell us about those guys. I've known Eric for 20 years. He's a winner, man. Eric does what he takes. Eric really knows cigars. He's passionate. He's in there. For years, I told him the problem was you got to hit the road, son, and he didn't want to hit the road. Now he's traveling, and he's just got that magnetic personality. So the more he gets out there, the more people are going to get to know who he is and learn about his brands, and he makes great cigars. Yeah, that uh, Laranja is fantastic. I agree. And In fact, I said this on the show two weeks ago. This is like Apple stock, baby. Bye, bye, bye. You got to buy Espinosa because it seems like everything coming out of the zone is awesome. Yep. All right, next one. Gran Habana. What about these guys? They were real popular a few years back. Oh, he's going to kill you. You're going to get me in trouble if people watch this show. <laughs> That's the idea. You know, I love George, uh, you know, but I got to say so. So. You know, there's identity problems over the years. It's Gran Habano. It's Gar. It's Gar. It's not Gran Habano. George Rico's there. He's not there. Yeah. It just doesn't seem like there's a coherent plan there. You know, George makes a great cigar here and there. And it's on. But doesn't do anything to get it out there. It's it's strange. You know, it's it's an anomaly. I don't and, like a lot. I don't like anomalies. And George is he can make a good cigar. There's no doubt about that. He's a great cigar. It's like it's like it's like giving him a great cigar, but he doesn't know what to do with it. Yeah, I'm gonna have to agree with you on that one too, Abe. Geez, this is crazy. We no no disagreements yet. <laughs> All right, Gurkha. Are you are you there? I'm here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for the fourth option on this one. <laughs> you know, look. I know Kaiser well. Kaiser's been victim of what a lot of guys have been victim in this industry, getting involved with the big catalogs, destroyed his brand, um, just destroyed the name of it, you know, just killed any value to the name Gurkha. And, and over the years, I, I see him trying to make transitions. They got the cellar reserves, they got brick and mortar cigars. So he's slowly trying to make the right moves and making all these cigars, more quality cigars that. Uh, even some of them now don't even carry the Gurkha name. I forget they call it East Indy Trading Company and stuff. So I think he's making the right moves. So if you got stock, I'd say hold on to it. You know, it does so, sell very good to uh, new cigar smokers. But I'd have to agree with you. the The only thing exploding about this stock is the cigars themselves. Hey, hey oh, yeah. yeah, I mean that's the problem. You know, so you know, it's. And a lot of guys make the mistakes he's made, you know. It's, it's like he, he, make, he takes like two steps forward and wants to take a step or two back, you know. Yeah. But, you know, there's some, there's some better quality stuff he makes, but you got to sift through it. And he's the package king of the industry, man. He makes some cool stuff, you yeah. know. He makes some cool stuff. But, yeah, for, for, seasoned, for seasoned cigar guys, you know, it's a hold or maybe a sell. Yeah. All right, how about a Luzioni? Hold. Hold. Okay, what do you think? Why? I love Dion. I think Dion is one of the smartest blenders and knowledgeable guys of people I know. I mean, uh, I always I always was very uh, admiring of his business acumen, but working with Pactum and having him on the show a couple times, uh, learning his in-depth real knowledge about tobacco is very, very amazing. Um, but as, as, a, as a brand, um, Dion's a very stretched out person. He's running a retail store and uh, the cigars are solid, but I don't know how much drive he is out there. And I don't know how much he really cares on uh, making new brands. I think he's happy with what he's got. He sells them. He comes up with an idea. He'll make it. You know, it's, it's, uh, 
It's, it's another one of the things like crowned heads. It's by design. You know, the stuff he makes is great. And almost, I, I like almost everything that Dion makes, but he's just not out there. He's not interested in trailblazing it. And, you know, he's just not what he wants to do. I'm going to say by only because of Dion, because I, I just, you know, think he, if you were looking at companies, you look at their CEO and you think, you know, the CEO, has he got it together or not? And I just trust Dion that he, he just makes really good stuff. So I'm going to say it's still a buy. He does, he does got it together, but he's not that interested in making a profit, yeah. <laughs> making money. You know, I mean, listen, this is a guy who had a trade show after two days, just shut down his booth. He said, ah, I'm not taking any more orders. <laughs> I never yeah. seen that done by anybody, you know? Yeah, I got enough orders. I'm closing the booth down two days early. <laughs> All right, here we go. Warped. You know, interesting. Uh, I'm going to say. The new guy on the block. I'm going to say bye. Yeah, I'm going to say bye too. I, I think that uh, the stuff that he makes, I, I really haven't disliked any of it. You know, but he's a new guy on the block, so he's got some hurdles. Now, he this was our brand of the year just based on the stuff he released in 2015, which was, know, I thought was fantastic. It was, your, it was your brand of the year. It was talked about probably more than his cigars and his brand more than by all the bloggers than any other brands out there. I saw him probably more often mentioned. I'd say I think on some guy's top 20, his cigars were like multiples showed up. Right. I know him personally. He lives in my backyard. Very sharp young man. A uh, good businessman, um, very passionate about what he does. Um, but we took it on recently, and I'm watching it online and in the store and reactions, and haven't seen major traction. But I got faith in his mission and his mission statement and his message. I, I think it's a solid buy. All right, solid buy. I agree with Abe on that one. All right, two left. My father cigars. Bye. Bye. Another cigar of the year from cigar two number two. one, two number one in, in three years or four years. Bye. Yeah, Pepin is uh, they make good stuff. Now some people are nervous that they that they uh, they're stretched thin. What do you what do you say to that? They've been seeing that for years. You know, he, he, he was making cigars for Eddie Ortega, Eric Espinosa, uh, Ernesto Padilla, Ashton. They've been seeing that for years. Have you noticed the problem? No, good point. So, the, the, as far as I'm concerned, they should keep saying it because they keep making great cigars. So, yeah, well, based based on the two number ones in three years, I gotta say, I gotta say bye too. Yeah. Last one, and this is on a similar vein. Tatuaje. Bye. Bye. Tell us about that. Tell us about Pete. Pete, 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 who who has that same formula. The kind of laid back formula. I want to do what I want to do. And, you know, but I think P has grown in, in spite of himself. You know, he's got, he's, he probably has one of the most dedicated followings. As, as, as I say, like you guys probably have one of the most dedicated followings in the blog verse. He probably has one of the most dedicated, die hard, loyal followings in this. Yeah. Place. And, um, you know, Pete knows what he's doing and he's working with one of the best families in the industry. So how can you go wrong? I'm going to just say hold on Tatawai only because of uh, 2015 was to me sort of a letdown from 2014. But you got to love Pete. I mean, he knows what he's doing, and I trust in him, so I'm going to hold that stock. So uh, there you go, folks. That's another edition of uh, Cigar Brand Stock Market. Thanks, Abe, for those answers. And uh, the last thing we got to do here is uh, pick a winner for your contest for uh, – Tickets for two. Now, when we say tickets for two, we mean uh, uh, you get a base ticket and you get a companion ticket to the show, so two people can go. And what we did on this contest, we, we started it today, and we said, please only enter if you can go. So we got some entries, and I'm going to run through them real quick, and then we're just going to do a random generator to pick the winner. Does that sound like a plan, Abe? Sound like a plan, but I'd just like to talk about one thing real quick before you get into that. Is yeah. that all right with you? Yeah. Um, we've worked very hard in the last four years, and anybody out there who follows you, I, I'm a big proponent in anything that propagates the cigar lifestyle. And we worked very hard over the last four years. We're coming up on our 200th episode in March of our radio show, Kiss My Ash Radio. 
And for anybody who a follower on Dojo, um, in my opinion, I've listened to everybody's shows, and is it biased? Probably, but probably right too. It's probably one of the best radio shows out there you're gonna listen to. It's two hours of solid lifestyle talk. We're not just gonna talk about rapper, binder, and filler for two hours. We're gonna talk about the stuff that you were gonna experience sitting around in a cigar shop. You know, we have a meet your maker segment every year where every week or somebody from the industry comes on. Right now our show airs in Palm Beach, South Florida, New York, and Atlanta. We got three major markets we're in. We're looking to hopefully get into another five or six markets, hopefully this year. We're trying. I want to make this show the national radio talk show, and um, you can listen to, right through our website on Kiss My Ash Radio. All our podcasts are available on our website. All our archived episodes or via iTunes. But if you haven't checked this out, I really strongly encourage it. We give away cool stuff every week through social media. You listen to the show, you can find out how. We give away a Zycar prize every week, some cool cigars every week. Um, so uh, we're very proud of it, and uh, we, we hope we can uh, welcome any of the your Dojo Nation guys who aren't familiar with Kiss My Ash Radio. You just go to www.kissmyashradio.com. That's that airs early here in the in the West. If you listen to it live, yeah. <laughs> to live. So tomorrow, who do you got on the show? Uh, we got uh, uh, Nakari from uh, Coots. Coots Cigar Company is going to be on our Meet Your Maker yeah. segment. We got a guy from uh, Copperhead Brewery, a local microbrew, who's producing some great beers. And uh, our good friend, Glenn Luke, the CRA, will be on. Oh, good. So we'll find out what's going on, any update on the FDA regulations and stuff like that. Okay. So everybody tune in tomorrow if you can. There's a, By the way, uh, when I listen to Kiss My Ash Radio, there's a, a little live chat thing where you can listen to the show and sort of talk, and uh, that's usually where I'm hanging out. Uh, yeah, we call it the shout box. Yeah, Coop's on there usually, Cigar Coop. That's one of my favorite guys in the whole industry. Uh, we There's have, been a hardcore of about 20 guys over the years who have always been on that box, man. They listen to the, they listen to the show live, and they'll chit-chat with each other while they're listening. Yeah, that's a blast. So tune in tomorrow. So are you ready to give away some tickets? Let's give away a pair of tickets. All right, let's give away a pair of tickets. So let, first, let's quickly, I'll just go through the entries real quick here. Uh, and then we'll we'll pick a winner. So uh, let me find my entries here. Da -da 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 -da. I had them all laid out. Hold on. Okay, there we go. I'm getting there. I'm getting there, Ed. So I know we had 13, 13 entries. Here we go. Here we go. 13, 13 guys. 13 guys. 13 guys could 13 go. Guys could go. So Jay Bird. So Jay Bird. Is that the winner? No. No. Oh. I'm going to go through these. Gonna go through these real quick. Okay. Well, that's nice. Yeah. I'm. Yeah. I'm. I'm. I'm there we, we, we go. There we go. All right. We had DC Smoker. Hi, Smoker. Our Mason was, Mason was Brad and Tampa. Brad and Tampa. Robin. Robin. Simon. Simon. Uh, Brad. Uh, Brad. Is that Brad Coleman? I don't know. I don't know. Oh. He's a regular. Oh. That, that's him. That, right? That's him, right? At Boynton Beach. Yeah, I think the guys at my shop every other day. Okay, so we got Scooby. Gari. Gari. Trans. Trans. Eddie. Eddie. J. Latch. J. Latch. Uh, Army R. N. Army R. N. And oh, there's. And, oh, there's. Okay, so, okay, so who's up? So who's up? So we're gonna. So we're gonna pick the winner. So the winner. So I got it. All right, so now we're going to do this random live on the air. So we got to have. Uh, gonna have uh, can you see that? Can you see that, Abe? I can see it. Can everybody else can see everybody that? Can everybody else see that? Sit here. Sit here. Make sure. All right, here we go. All right, here we go. So I will. So pick I will. Pick. This is this, this is, is five, this folks. five, folks. All right, so one to thirteen. Right, so one to thirteen. Colts. Colts. Ten. Ten. So that would be. So that would be. 
Let me pick who was number pick who was number two. <laughs> Should have wrote them down. I got him here. I, I got, got him. him here. I got him. Number ten was number ten was Transed twenty six. Congratulations. 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 There we go. There we Trans go. Trans Trans is the winner. Is the winner. All right, man. So All right, we man. So we two tickets. Two tickets. Uh, uh, to that guy. Will that guy will give me the uh, uh, give me the information. The tickets will be at will call. Tickets will be at will call. Be at will call. Just give me the full information. We'll have their tickets ready at will call. All right, Abe. Well, hey, we went. All right, Abe. Well, hey, we went overtime. Thanks for being on the show. Thanks for being on the show. My pleasure. It was an honor, man. It was cool hanging out with the sensei. <laughs> Hopefully next year we'll get Hopefully next year we'll get back to For sure, man. Give my regards to the boys. All right, we'll do. Hey, right, guys. We'll hey, guys. Thanks for smoking. Thanks for smoking. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, don't forget the pick and uh, Sunday Super Bowl. Sunday's and until then, remember. Until then, remember. Never. Never. Remember. Never. Hello. Hello. Hey, Hello. Hey, 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 Don't hang up, Dave, okay? I'm still here. All right, you, all right, all right. I'm going to end.